privilege to be here to offer the prayers and a short reflection as we gather on this day to remember those who gave so much for our freedoms, especially today when we do this first ceremony before our new cenotaph, which I think is a, a marvelous uh, tribute to those who've gone before us. And it's great that our city can now have such a memorial. And as I, as I say these prayers, we come from many different traditions. So I will pray according to my tradition, but if you have another tradition, please feel free to, in your own way, offer your own prayers and to end the prayers according to what really works for you and is according to your tradition. I'd like to begin with a reading from the Psalm, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the darkness, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. to give a short reflection. Canadians have long remembered their fallen. 
that is why we are here. The motto at HMCS Tecumseh, where I was a chaplain for more years than I care to remember, goes like this, in peace, prepare for war. It's a reminder that while we seek peace, far too often war seeks and finds us. It is important to ever be mindful that freedom is a way of life that many would try to steal from us, even bringing violence to our own cities. It had a great effect on me. I asked an immigrant one time why he chose to come to Canada. And he said it was a place to keep my family safe. I think that says a whole lot about our country. And this is only by honoring each other and protecting each other, regardless of our differences, will we make and keep this great country glorious and free. Those who serve in the military and other first responders are the frontline soldiers who pre preserve freedom, an idea that many do not hold, and they make safe our everyday living. We must keep true to our enduring values as a free nation under God. In order that we remain free, only if we, all of us, remember the great sacrifices made for us and that we remain firmly committed to the ideals of freedom and dignity for all people will freedom continue to thrive in our country. Today is our opportunity to remember and commit ourselves to the cause of freedom and peace. We remain committed for we know only too well that while we seek peace, violence and war will find us. Even as we remember that the tomb of the last of the unknown soldier, let us remember that our freedom comes with a cost and each of us is responsible to preserve that freedom for the coming generation. Freedom is not free but freedom is glorious for each one of us. It allows us to be who we are. So we remember images, ships tossed in the air by explosions. Remember men falling beside their friends. We remember telegrams coming to the doors of neighbors, husbands, never to return, sons and daughters who are loved and lost. We remember with pain, but we remember so that their sacrifice will never be taken lightly nor forgotten, nor the freedom that they want for us lost. Let us be faithful to our heritage, to our responsibility, and to the generations yet to come. As we gather, let us pray. O oh God, our ruler and guide, in whose hands are the destinies of this and every nation, we give you thanks for the freedom we enjoy in this land and for those who lay down their lives to defend them. We pray that we and all the people of Canada, gratefully remembering their courage and their sacrifice, may have grace to live in a spirit of justice, generosity, and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Give honor to all and love and serve the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you always. Amen. And I have the last post.
they shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. I'd like to call now on uh, the worship of Patricia Matthews. Say a few words. Thank you. Last Remembrance Day, we gathered to honor and remember our fallen heroes and thank those that are still with us. This year, we're doing it in front of an everlasting symbol of thanks because of the tenacity and dedication of some of our own citizens who have served. But our tone last year was very different from past Remembrance Day ceremonies because we lost good men in uniform and we were reflecting on that horrible loss and those horrible events. Then we all took a deep breath and maybe wiped away a tear and moved on with life. We went back to work, back to our kids, our grandkids, our parents and our busy lives, and that memory faded, as all bad memories eventually do. Those names and events were forgotten or tucked away for future remembrance. But I don't want to forget those names or those events, and I don't think you should either. Not because those people were more special than any other hero who fell while in service to our country, but because they fell on Canadian soil. Warrant Officer Patrice Vincent, Canadian forces, run down by a suspected terrorist in St. Jean sur Richelieu, Quebec. Corporal Nathan Cirillo, reservist of the 91st Canadian Highlanders, shot by a suspected terrorist at our National War Memorial in Ottawa. I think we need to remember them because of what they represent, a threat of terrorism here at home on our own soil. While the reasons for their deaths may or may not in the end have any link to a terrorist threat, we as a country, we as a community here thought they might. We reacted as if they did. We stood together and said, no, you can threaten us, but you won't change who we are as Canadians. I'm very proud of us and our firm stance against a potential threat. I'm proud of the things as a community that we didn't do and the actions we didn't take in response. We still treated each other with respect and maintained our identities as good community members. But the fact is we did change, at least a little. We've come to understand deep in our bones that the world isn't what it used to be and we aren't as safely isolated here as we thought. We as a nation have come in to have an appreciation that anyone who puts on a uniform in service to our country at any time, anywhere, accepts there is a risk to that, even here at home. When men and women in the past donned a uniform, they went overseas to protect not only our rights and freedoms, but those of others. They took a risk that they might not come home. They accepted that risk and they went anyway. They did it knowing that they would be safe when they came back to our communities. Many did it for precisely that reason to protect us from having to face the atrocity of war in our own backyards. They fought bravely, sacrificed their lives, and those that returned home were and are never the same again. Their innocence at the very least was lost in the first battle. Can you imagine what that would be like? Imagine leaving home with one last kiss to your loved ones and knowing it may be your last. I can vividly imagine that, and it's why I'm so grateful to those that have done it. I can conjure up in my own mind how it must feel, and I know I'm not brave enough to do it. I know that the weight of that risk must have been heavy on those that fought for us overseas, and I understand the weight got heavier for those that serve us now, after last year's events. We have had our reality shaken up after those deaths linked to terrorism and we will never quite be the same again. I hope it's given us all a better sense of appreciation. So while we sit or stand here in the chilly weather, feeling a little uncomfortable, remember those men and women who willingly suffered through much worse, 
feeling afraid and anxious and weary, missing the safety of home and probably questioning their choice to join more than once. They came forward because of a desire to serve and a love of our country and they sacrificed so we could be here today. They gave me and all of you the ability to be a proud Canadian, the ability to be a Canadian at all. There are so many more like them, some here today who are not only part of the military, but RCMP, police and more, who woke up this morning, proudly put on those uniforms and have accepted a new level of personal risk to serve this country and all of us. You and I are here today to remember those that have sacrificed. Please take the time to thank those here today that are still doing it. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, our member of the Legislative Assembly, Mrs. Leela Sharon here. I would like to recite a poem. Why we wear a poppy. Please wear a poppy, the lady said, and held one forth, and I shook my head. Then I stopped and watched as she offered them there, and her face was old and lined with care. But beneath the scars the years had made, there remained a smile that refused to fade. A boy came whistling down the street, bouncing along on carefree feet. His smile was full of joy and fun. Lady, he said, may I have one? When she pinned it on, he turned to say, why do we wear a poppy today? The lady smiled in her wistful way and answered, this is Remembrance Day. And the poppy there is a symbol for the gallant men and women who died in war. And because they did, you and I are free. That's why we wear a poppy, you see. I had a boy about your size with golden hair and big blue eyes. He loved to play and jump and shout. Free as a bird, he would race about. As the years went by, he learned and grew and became a man and someday you will too. He was fine and strong with a boyish smile, but he seemed with us for such a little while. When war broke out and he went away, I still remember his face that day. When he smiled at me and said goodbye, I'll be back soon, Mom, please don't cry. But the war went on and he had to stay, and all I could do was wait and pray. His letters told of the awful fight, and I can still see it in my dreams at night, with the tanks and guns and cruel barbed wire and miles of bullets and bombs and fire. Till at last, at last, the war was won. And that's why we wear a poppy, son. The small boy turned as if to go and he said, thanks lady, I'm glad to know. That sure did sound like an awful fight, but your son, did he come back all right? A tear rolled down each faded cheek. She shook her head, but didn't speak. And I slunk away in a sort of shame, and if you were me, you would have done the same. For our thanks in giving is oft delayed, through our freedom, though our freedom was bought and thousands paid. And so when we see a poppy worn, let us reflect on the burden borne by those who gave their very all when asked to answer their country's call. That we are at home and peace might live, then wear a poppy, remember, and give. Don Crawford. Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. I would like to thank Her Worship, Mayor Matthews, the Honorable MLA for Chestermere Rocky View, Leela Sharon Ahir, Padre, serving members, not only of the forces, but also of emergency services. Mr. Ray Hessler, and the Cenotaph Committee, Chestermere City Council, veterans, residents of Chestermere, friends and family. It is a great honor to be here today to address my adopted home of Chestermere. I want to share with you what remembrance means to me. Since Wednesday last week, I have had the opportunity to travel across Alberta and address hundreds of children in schools from kindergarten to
to grade 12. And when I speak with them, I always come back to the poem in Flanders Field by Lieutenant Colonel John McRae. In there he wrote, to you from falling hands, we pass the torch. To me, that torch is Canada. We are a beacon of light in the darkness. Every day as a veteran and as a serving soldier, I get to wear my torch. I am lucky and I am blessed because our fallen veterans and soldiers will never get that opportunity again. They gave their today for our tomorrow. Because I am here, I am determined to hold that torch high in honor of their sacrifice. Today is Remembrance Day. Tomorrow will be the 12th. The day after that will be the 13th. And all the days to come, I ask you to hold your torch high every day and honor those that came before us. From falling hands, they have charged all of us with never allowing that torch to be extinguished. Just as though, <clears throat> just as those that we remember today, we must set the path for those that will come after us. The fallen gave their all for us and we should do no less for our future generations, lest we forget. Government of Alberta, MLA, Leela Sharon Ahir. <coughs> On behalf of City of Chestermere, Mayor Patricia Matthews and Councillors. Rocky View School Trustee Bev LaPere. <laughs> and 184th Beavers, Cubs, and Scouts. None. I would like to. I think to like to take this opportunity to thank the the uh, Chestermere High School band, the solos trumpeter, 
Cyril Blatchard. I'd like to thank Public Works for their hard work in setting all this up for us. We would ask you to please remain in place until the march of the colors has been fully marched off. And could you join us now for the singing of God Save the Queen? Save the Queen. 